background to Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, an introduction programming manual, operations research technical manual, TW SW 7905.1. The following document is taken from two sources. The first was acquired on a website, of which I can't remember the address, listing as its source the book titled Behold, A Pale Horse by William Cooper. Light Technology Publishing, 1991. The second source is a crudely copied booklet which does not contain a copyright notice or a publisher's name. With the exception of the foreword, the preface, the main thing that was missing from the first source was the illustrations. As we began comparing the two, we realised that the illustrations and the accompanying text, also missing from the first, made up a significant part of the document. This has now been restored by the Lawful Path, and so far as I know, is the only internet copy available complete with illustrations. We have no first-hand knowledge that this document is genuine, however, many of the concepts contained herein are certainly reasonable, important and bear strong consideration. If anyone has additional knowledge about the source of this document, has better copies of the illustrations than the ones posted here, has any missing pieces to this document or has any comments which can improve upon the quality of this document, we will appreciate your comments. The Lawful Path Forward to Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars This manuscript was delivered to our offices by an unknown person. We did not steal the document nor are we involved with any theft from the United States government and we did not get the document by way of any dishonest methods. We feel that we are not endangering the national security by reproducing this document, quite the contrary. It has been authenticated and we feel that we are not only within our rights to publish it, but morally bound to do so. Regarding the training manual, you may have detected that we had to block out the marginal notes made by the selectee at the CIA training centre, but I can assure you that the manual is authentic and was printed for the purpose of introducing the selectee to the conspiracy. It has been authenticated by four different technical writers for military intelligence. One such recently retired who wants very much to have his, this manual distributed throughout the world. And one who is still employed as an electronics engineer by the federal government and has access to the entire series of training manuals. One was stationed in Hawaii and held the highest security clearance in the naval intelligence, and another who is now teaching at a university and has been working with the Central Intelligence Agency for a number of years and wants out before the axe falls on the conspirators. We believed that the entire world should know about this plan, so we distributed internationally 100 of these manuscripts to ask individuals at top-level positions their opinions. The consensus opinion was to distribute this to as many people as who wanted it, to the end that they would not only understand that war has been declared against them, but would be able to properly identify the true enemy to humanity. Delamere Duveras Preface Conspiracy theories are nothing new to history. Plots to kill Caesar and overthrow Rome abounded, for instance. However, it is seldom that concrete clues to such plots come to light and are generally known. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, an introduction programming manual, was uncovered quite by accident on July the 7th, 1986, when an employee of Boeing Aircraft Company purchased a surplus IBM copier for scrap parts at a sale and discovered inside details of a plan, hatched in the embryonic days of the Cold War, which called for control of the masses through manipulation of industry, people's pastimes, education and political leanings. It called for a quiet revolution, putting brother against brother and diverting the public's attention from what is really going on. The document you are about to read is reprinted in its virgin form with diagrams as a touch of reality. Table of Contents 
Forward. Preface. Security. Historical Introduction. Political Introduction. Energy. Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon. Theoretical Introduction. General Energy Concepts. Mr. Rothschild's Energy Discovery. Apparent Capital as Paper Inductor. Breakthrough. Application in Economics. The Economic Model. Industrial Diagrams. Three Industrial Classes. Aggregation. The E-Model. Economic Inductance. Inductive Factors to Consider. Translation. Time-Flow Relationships and Self-Destructive Oscillations. Industry Equivalent Circuits. Stages of Schematic Simplification. Generalization. Final Bill of Goods. The technical coefficients, the household industry, household models, economic shock testing, introduction to the theory of shock testing, example of shock testing, introduction to economic amplifiers, short list of inputs, short list of outputs, table of strategies, diversion, the primary strategy, diversion summary, Consent, the primary victory. Amplification energy sources. Logistics. The artificial womb. The political structure of a nation, dependency. Action offence. Responsibility. Summary. System analysis. The draft. Enforcement. The following document, dated May 1979, was found on July the 7th. 1986 in an IBM copier that has been purchased at a surplus sale. Top Secret Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars Operations Research Technical Manual TM hyphen SW 7905.1 Page 1 Welcome aboard this publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War, called the Quiet War, being conducted using the subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies and its weaponry. May 1979, number 74-1120. Security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e. the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e. slavery and genocide. This manual is in itself an analogue declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny. Otherwise, it might be recognised as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodologies for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid, with no agonising over religious, moral or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity and yet analyse and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without the loss of discretion or humility. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. Introduction. 
Island Weapon Technology has evolved from Operations Research, OR, a strategic and tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II. The original purpose of Operations Research was to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defence with the objective of effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies, i.e. logistics. It was soon recognised by those in positions of power that the same methods might be useful for totally controlling a society, but better tools were necessary. Social engineering, the analysis and automation of a society, requires the correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information, data. So a high-speed computerised data processing system was necessary which could race ahead of the society and predict when society would arrive for capitulation. Relay computers were too slow, but the electronic computer, invented in 1946 by J. Presper Eckhart and John W. Morchley, filled the bill. The next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947 by the mathematician George B. Danzig. Then in 1948, the transistor invented by J. Bardeen, W. H. Brattain and W. Shockley promised great expansion of the computer field by reduced space and power requirements. With these three inventions under their direction, those in positions of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. Immediately, the Rockefeller Foundation got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant to Harvard College, funding the Harvard Economic Research Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. One year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. In 1952, the grant period terminated and a high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of social operations research. The Harvard project had been very fruitful, as is borne out by the publication of some of its results in 1953, suggesting the feasibility of economic, social engineering. Studies in the Structure of the American Economy, Copyright, 1953, by Vasily Leontev. International Science Press, Inc., White Plains, New York. Engineered in the last half of the decade of the 1940s, the new quiet war machine stood, so to speak, in sparkling gold-plated hardware on the showroom floor by 1954. With the creation of the Mesa in 1954, the promise of unlocking unlimited sources of fusion atomic energy from the heavy hydrogen in seawater and the consequent availability of unlimited social power was a possibility only decades away. The combination was irresistible. The quiet war was quietly declared by the international elite at a meeting held in 19... Though the silent weapon system was nearly exposed 13 years later, the evolution of the new weapon system had never suffered any major setbacks. This volume marks the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Quiet War. Already, this domestic war has had many victories on many fronts throughout the world. Political introduction. In 1954, it was well recognised by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades, before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power, for the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of the energy sciences. Energy Energy is recognised as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of sources and control of natural energy, and social science, the
theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and bookkeeping can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge, the end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue, who will be the beneficiary? In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy, wealth, of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure and apply new weapons which, as it turned out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name Silent Weapons. In conclusion, the objective of economic research, as conducted by the magnets of capital, banking, and the industries of commodities, goods, and services, is the establishment of an economy which is totally predictable and manipulatable. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low-class elements of society must be brought under total control, i.e. must be housebroken, trained and assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age, before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower-class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government-operated daycare centres for the occupationally orphaned children. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the mote of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. With such an initial handicap, even bright lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extricating themselves from this assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order, peace and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction, explosion, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnate instead of a military general. It makes no obvious noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life, that is, unmistakable to a trained observer who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon, and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feeling in a rational way, or handle the problem with intelligence. 
Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help, and they do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Theoretical Introduction Give me control over a nation's currency and I care not who makes its laws. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, 1743-1812 to Today's silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered, succinctly expressed and effectively applied by the quoted Mr. Mayor Amschel Rothschild. Mr. Rothschild discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. He of course did not think of this discovery in these 20th century terms and, to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution, the rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of the world economy. General Energy Concepts In the study of energy systems, there always appears three elementary concepts. These are potential energy, kinetic energy and energy dissipation. And corresponding to these concepts, there are three idealised, essentially pure physical counterparts called passive components. 1. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of potential energy is associated with a physical property called elasticity or stiffness and can be represented by a stretched spring. In electronic science, potential energy is stored in a capacitator instead of a spring. This property is called capacitance instead of elasticity or stiffness. 2. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of kinetic energy is associated with a physical property called inertia or mass and can be represented by a mass or a flywheel in motion. In electronic science, kinetic energy is stored in an inductor, in a magnetic field, instead of a mass. This property is called inductance instead of inertia. 3. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of energy dissipation is associated with a physical property called friction or resistance and can be represented by a dash pot or other device which converts energy into heat. In electronic science, dissipation of energy is performed by an element called either a resistor or a conductor. The term resistor being the one generally used to describe a more ideal device, e.g. wire, employed to convey electronic energy efficiently from one location to another. The property of a resistance or conductor is measured as either resistance or conductance reciprocals. In economics, these three energy concepts are associated with 1. Economic capacitance, capital, money, stock, inventory, investments in buildings and durables, etc. 2. Economic conductance, goods, product flow, coefficients. 3. Economic inductance, services, the influence of the population of industry on output. All the mathematical theory developed in the study of one energy system, e.g. mechanics, electronics, etc., can be immediately applied in the study of any other energy system, e.g. economics. Mr. Rothschild's Energy Discovery What Mr. Rothschild had discovered 
was the basic principle of power, influence and control over people as applied to economics. That principle is, when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. Mr Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people, inductance with people corresponding to a magnetic field, into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth instead of real compensation. They would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for, so long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Mr Rothschild loaned his promissory notes to individuals and to governments. These would cre create overconfidence. Then he would make money scarce, tighten control of the system and collect the collateral through the obligation of contracts. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to ignite a war. Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. That government which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. Collection of debts was guaranteed by economic aid to the enemy of the debtor. The profit derived from this economic methodology made Mr Rothschild all the more able to expand his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be printed by government order beyond the limits, inflation, of backing in precious metal or the production of goods and services. Apparent capital as paper inductor. In this structure, credit, presented as pure element called currency, has the appearance of capital but is in effect negative capital. Hence it has the appearance of service but is in fact indebtedness or debt. It is therefore an economic inductance instead of an economic capacitance, and if balanced in no other way, will be balanced by the negation of population, war, genocide. The total goods and services represent real capital called the gross national product, and currency may be printed up to this level and still represent economic capacitance. But currency printed beyond this level is subtractive, represents the introduction of economic inductance, and constitutes notes of indebtedness. War is therefore the balancing of the system by killing the true creditors, the public, which have been taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Mr Rothschild had discovered that currency gave him the power to rearrange the economic structure to his own advantage, to shift economic inductance to those economic positions which would encourage the greatest economic instability and oscillation. The final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computing equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillations created by price shocking and excess paper energy credits, paper inductance, inflation, breakthrough. The aviation field provided the greatest evolution in economic engineering by way of the mathematical theory of shock testing. In this process, a projectile is fired from an airframe on the ground and the impulse of the recoil is monitored by vibration transducers connected to the airframe and wired to the chart recorders. By studying the echoes or reflections of the recoil impulse in the airframe, it is possible to discover critical vibrations in the structure of the airframe which either vibrations of the engine or aeolian vibrations of the wings, or a combination of the two, might reinforce resulting in a resonant self-destruction of the airframe in flight as an aircraft. 
From the standpoint of engineering, this means that the, re the strengths and weaknesses of the structure of the airframe in terms of vibrational energy can be discovered and manipulated. Application in economics. To use this method of airframe shock testing in economic engineering, the prices of commodities are shocked and the public consumer reaction is monitored. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computer and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. It is by this process that partial, differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry. Dissipative consumer structure. Then, the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated, and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated, computer-regulated, social energy bookkeeping system. Eventually, every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences such knowledge guaranteed by computer association of consumer preferences. Universal product code, UPC, zebra-striped pricing codes on packages. With identified consumers, identified via association with the use of a credit card and later a permanent tattooed body number, invisible under normal ambient illumination. Summary. Economics is only a social extension of a natural energy system. It also has its three passive components. Because of the distribution of wealth and the lack of communication and lack of data, this field has been the last energy field for which a knowledge of these three passive components has been developed. Since energy is the key to all activity on the face of the earth, it follows that in order to attain a monopoly of energy, raw materials, goods and services, and to establish a world system of slave labour, it is necessary to have a first strike capability in the field of economics. In order to maintain our position, it is necessary that we have absolute first knowledge of the science of control over all economic factors and the first experience at engineering the world economy. In order to achieve such sovereignty, we must at least achieve this one end, that the public will not make either the logical or mathematical connection between economics and the other energy sciences or learn to apply such knowledge. This is becoming increasingly difficult to control because more and more businesses are making demands upon their computer programmers to create and apply mathematical models for the management of those businesses. It is only a matter of time before the new breed of private programmer economists will catch on to the far-reaching implications of the work begun at Harvard in 1948. The speed with which they can communicate their warning to the public will largely depend upon how effective we have been at controlling the media, subverting education and keeping the public distracted with matters of no real importance. The Economic Model Economics, as a social energy science, has as a first objective the description of the complex way in which any given unit of resources is used to satisfy some economic want. Leontief Matrix This first objective when it is extended to get the most product from the least or limited resources, comprises that objective of general military and industrial logistics known as operations research. The simplex method of linear programming. The Harvard Economic Research Project, 1948, was an extension of World War II operations research. Its purpose was to discover the science of controlling an economy at first the American economy and then the world economy. It was felt that with sufficient mathematical foundation and data, 
it would be nearly as easy to predict and control the trend of an economy as to predict and control the trajectory of a projectile. Such has proven to be the case. Moreover, the economy has been transformed into a guided missile on target. The immediate aim of the Harvard project was to discover the economic structure, what forces change that structure, how the behaviour of the structure can be predicted, and how it can be manipulated. What was needed was a well-organised knowledge of the mathematical structures and interrelationships of investment, production, distribution and consumption. Like a short story of it all, it was discovered that an economy obeyed the same laws as electricity and that all of the mathematical theory and practical and computer know-how developed for the electronical field could be directly applied in the study of economics. This discovery was not openly declared and its more subtle implications were and are kept a closely guarded secret. For example, that in an economic model, human life is measured in dollars and that the electric spark generated when opening a switch connected to an active inductor is mathematically analogous to the initiation of war. The greatest hurdle which theoretical economists faced was the accurate description of the household as an industry. This is a challenge because consumer purchases are a matter of choice which in turn is influenced by income, price and other economic factors. This hurdle was cleared in an indirect and statistically approximate way by an application of shock testing to determine the current characteristics called current technical coefficients of a household industry. Finally, because problems in theoretical electronics can be translated very easily into problems of theoretical electronics and the solution translated back again, it follows that only a book of language translation and concept definition needed to be written for economics. The remainder could be gotten from standard works on mathematics and electronics. This makes the publication of books on advanced economies unnecessary and greatly simplifies project security. Industrial diagrams. An ideal industry is defined as a device which receives value from other industries in several forms and converts them into one specific product for sales and distribution to other industries. It has several inputs and one output. What the public normally thinks of as one industry is really an industrial complex where several industries under one roof produce one or more products. A pure, single output industry can be represented over simply by a circuit block as follows. See diagram 1, page 13. A three-industry network can be diagrammed as follows. See diagram 2, page 13. A node is a symbol of collection and distribution of flow. Node number 3 receives from industry number 3 and distributes to industries number 1 and number 3. If industry number 3 manufactures chairs, then a flow from industry number three back to industry number three simply indicates that industry number three is using part of its own output product, for example, as office furniture. Therefore, the flow may be summarised by the equations see top of page 14. Three industrial classes. Industries fall into three categories or classes by type of output. 1. Class number 1. Capital. Resources. 2. Class number 2. Goods. Commodities or use. Dissipative. 3. Class number 3. Services. Action of population. Class number 1 industries exist at three levels. 1. Nature. Sources of energy and raw materials. 2. Government printing of currency equal to the gross national product, GMP, and extension of currency in excess of GNP. 3. Banking, loaning of money for interest and extension, inflation, counterfeiting, 
of economic, economic value through the deposit loan accounts. Class number two industries exist as producers of tangible or consumer dissipated products. This sort of activity is usually recognised and labelled by the public as industry. Class number three industries are those which have service rather than a tangible product at their output. These industries are called one, households, and two, governments. Their output is human activity of a mechanical sort, and their basis is population. Aggregation. The whole economic system can be represented by a three industry model if one allows the names of the outputs to be one, capital, two, goods, and three, services. The problem with this representation is that it would not show the influence, say, the textile industry on ferrous metal industry. This is because both the textile industry and the ferrous metal industry would be contained within a single classification called the goods industry, and by this process of combining or aggregating these two industries under one system block, they would lose their economic individuality. The E-model the national economy consists of simultaneous flows of production, distribution, consumption and investment. If all of these elements include labour and human functions are assigned a numerical value in like units of measure, say $1939, then this flow can be further represented by a current flow in an electronic circuit and its behaviour can be predicted and manipulated with useful precision. The three ideal passive energy components of electronics, the capacitator, the resistor and the inductor, correspond to the three ideal passive energy components of economics called the pure industries of capital, goods and services respectively. Economic capacitance represents the storage of capital in one form or another. Economic conductance represents the level of conductance of materials for the production of goods. Economic inductance represents the inertia of economic value in motion. This is a population phenomenon known as services. Economic inductance. An electrical inductor, e.g. a coil or wire, has an electric current as its primary phenomenon and a magnetic field as its secondary phenomenon, inertia. Corresponding to this, an economic inductor has a flow of economic value as its primary phenomenon and a population field as its secondary field phenomenon of inertia. When the flow of economic value, e.g. money, diminishes, the human population field collapses in order to keep the economic value, money, flowing, extreme case war. This public inertia is a result of consumer buying habits, expected standard of living, etc., and is generally a phenomenon of self-preservation. Inductive factors to consider. 1. Population. 2. Magnitude of the economic activities of the government. 3. The method of financing these government's activities. See Peter Paul principle inflation of the currency. Translation. A few examples will be given. Charge. Coulombs. Dollars. 1939. Flow. Current. Amperes. Coulombs per second. Dollars of flow per year. Motivating force. Volts. Dollars. Output. Demand. Conductance, amperes per volt, dollars of flow per year per dollar demand. Capacitance, coulombs per volt, dollars of production, inventory, stock per dollar demand. Time flow relationships and self-destructive oscillations. An ideal industry may be symbolised electronically in various ways. The simplest way is to represent a demand by a voltage and a supply by a current. When this is done, the relationship between the two becomes what is called an admittance, 
which can result from three economic factors. One, foresight flow. Two, present flow. And three, hindsight flow. One, foresight flow is the result of that property of living entities to cause energy, food, to be stored for a period of low energy, e.g. a winter season. It consists of demands made upon an economic system for that period of low energy, winter season. In a production industry, it takes several forms, one of which is known as production stock or inventory. In electronic symbology, this specific industry demand, a pure capital industry, is represented by capacitance and the stock or resource is represented by a stored charge. Satisfaction of an industry demand suffers a lag because of the loading effect of inventory priorities. 2. Present flow ideally involves no delays. It is, so to speak, input today for output today, a hand a hand-to-mouth flow. In electronic symbology, this specific industry demand, a pure US industry, is represented by a conductance which is then a simple economic valve, a dissipative element. Hindsight flow is known as habit or inertia. In electronics, this phenomenon is the characteristic of an inductor economic analog equals a pure service industry in which a current flow economic analog equals flow of money creates a magnetic field economic analog equals active human population which if the current money flow begins to diminish collapse war to maintain the current flow of money energy other large alternatives to war, as economic inductors or economic flywheels, are an open-ended social welfare program or an enormous, but fruitful, open-ended space program. The problem with stabilising the economic system is that there is too much demand on account of 1. too much greed and 2. too much population. This creates excessive economic inductance which can only be balanced with economic capacitance. True resources of value, e.g. in goods or services. The social welfare programme is nothing more than an open-ended credit balance system, which creates a false capital industry to give non-productive people a roof over their heads and food in their stomachs. This can be useful, however, because the recipients become state property in return for the gift a standing army for the elite, for he who pays the piper picks the tune. Those who get hooked on the economic drug must go to the elite for a fix. In this, the method of introducing large amounts of stabilising capacitance is by borrowing on the future credit of the world. This is a fourth law of motion onset and consists of performing an action and leaving the system before the reflected reaction returns to the point of action, a delayed reaction. The means of surviving the reaction is by changing the system before the reaction can return. By this means, politicians become more popular in their own time and the public pays later. In fact, the measure of such a politician is the delay time. The same thing is achieved by a government by printing money beyond the limit of the gross national product and economic process called inflation. This puts a large quantity of money into the hands of the public and maintains a balance against their greed, creates a false self-confidence in them and for a while stays the wolf from the door. They must eventually resort to war to balance the account because war ultimately is merely the act of destroying the creditor and the politicians are the publicly hired hitmen that justify the act to keep the responsibility and blood off the public conscience. See section on consent factors and social economic structuring. If the people really cared about their fellow man, they would control their appetites, greed, procreation, etc., so that they would not have to operate on a credit or welfare social system 
which steals from the worker to satisfy the bum. Since most of the general public will not exercise restraint, there are only two alternatives to reduce the economic inductance of the system. 1. Let the populace bludgeon each other to death in war, which will only result in a total destruction of the living earth. 2. Take control of the world by the use of economic silent weapons in a form of quiet warfare and reduce the economic inductance of the world to a safe level by a process of benevolent slavery and genocide. The latter option has been taken as the obviously better option. At this point it should be crystal clear to the reader why absolute secrecy about the silent weapons is necessary. The general public refuses to improve its own mentality and its faith in its fellow man. It has become a herd of proliferating barbarians and, so to speak, a blight upon the face of the earth. They do not care about economic science to learn why they have not been able to avoid war, despite religious morality, and their religious or self-gratifying refusal to deal with earthly problems renders the solution of the earthly problem unreachable to them. It is left to those few who are truly willing to think and survive as the fittest to survive, to solve the problem for themselves, as the few who really care. Otherwise, exposure of the silent weapons would destroy our only hope of preserving the seed of the future true humanity. Industry Equivalent Circuits 1. The industry Q can be given a block symbol as follows. Block diagram of industry Q. See diagram page 18. Terminals number 1 through hash M are connected directly to the outputs of industries number 1 and hash M respectively. The equivalent circuit of industry Q is given as follows. See diagram 2, page 18. Characteristics All inputs are at zero volts. A, amplifier, causes output current, IQ, to be represented by a voltage, EQ. Amplifier delivers sufficient current at EQ to drive all loads, Y10 through YMQ and sync all currents I1Q through IMQ. The unit transconductance ampl amplifier AQ is constructed as follows. See diagram page 19. Arrow denotes the direction of the flow of capital, goods and services. The total demand is given as EQ, where EQ equals IQ. See Diagram 2, page 19. 1. The coupling network YPQ symbolises the demand which Industry Q makes on Industry P. The connective admittance YPQ is called the technical coefficient of the Industry Q, stating the demand of Industry Q called the industry of use for the output in capital, goods or services of industry P called the industry of origin. The flow of commodities from industry P to industry Q is given by IPQ evaluated by the formula IPQ equals QPQ star EQ. When the admittance YPQ is a simple conductance, this formula takes on the common appearance of Ohm's law. IPQ equals GPQ star IQ. The interconnection of a three industry system can be diagrammed as follows. The blocks of the industry diagram can be opened up revealing the technical coefficients and a much simpler format. The equations of flow are given as follows. See diagram, page 20. Stages of schematic simplification. See diagrams on page 20. J. 
generalization. All of this may now be summarized. Let IJ represent the output of industry J and IJK the number of the product of industry J absorbed annually by industry K and IJO the amount of the same product J made available for outside use. See equation 1, page 21. Then, substituting the technical coefficients Y, J, K. See equation 2, page 21, which is the general equation of every admittance in the industry circuit. Final bill of goods. Final bill of goods is called the final bill of goods or the bill of final demand and is zero when the system can be closed by the evaluation of the technical coefficients of the non-productive industries, government and households. Households may be regarded as a productive industry, with labour as its output product. The technical coefficients. The quantities YJK are called the technical coefficients of the industrial system. They are admittances and can consist of any combination of three passive parameters, conductance, capacitance and inductance. Diodes are used to make the flow un unidirectional and point against the flow. G, J, K equals economic conductance, absorption coefficient. Y, J, K equals economic capacitance, capital coefficient. LJK equals economic inductance, human activity coefficient. Types of admittances. See diagram, page 23. The household industry. The industries of finance, banking, manufacturing and government, real counterparts of the pure industries of capital, goods and services, are easily defined because they are generally logically structured. Because of this, their processes can be described mathematically and their technical coefficients can be easily deduced. This, however, is not the case with the service industry known as the household industry. Household models. When the industry flow diagram is represented by a two block system of households on the right, and all other industries on the left. The following results. See diagram, page 24. The arrows from left to right, labelled A, B, C, etc., denote flow of economic value from the industries in the left-hand block to the industries in the right-hand block, called households. These may be thought of as the monthly consumer flows of the following commodities. A, alcoholic beverages, B. Beef. C. Coffee. U. Unknown, etc. The problem with a the theoretical econo economist faces is that the consumer preferences of any household is not easily predictable and the technical coefficients of any one household tend to be a non-linear, very complex and variable function of income prices, etc. Computer information derived from the use of the universal product code in conjunction with credit card purchase as an individual household identifier could change this state of affairs, but the UPC method is not yet available on a national or even a significant regional scale. To compensate for this data deficiency, an alternative indirect approach of analysis has been adopted known as economic shock testing. This method, widely used in the aircraft manufacturing industry, develops an aggregate, statistical sort of data. Applied to economics, this means that all of the households in one region or in the whole nation are studied as a group or class rather than individually. And the mass behaviour rather than the individual behaviour is used to discover useful estimates of the technical coefficients governing the economic structure of the hypothetical single household industry. Notice in the industry flow diagram that the values for the flows A, B, C, etc. 
are accessible to measurement in terms of selling prices and total sales of commodities. One method of evaluating the technical coefficients of the household industry depends upon shocking the prices of a commodity and noting the changes in the sales of all the commodities. Economic shock testing In recent times, the application of operations research to the study of the public economy has been obvious for anyone who understands the principles of shock testing. In the shock testing of an aircraft airframe, the recoil impulse of firing a gun mounted on that airframe causes shock waves in that structure which tell aviation engineers the conditions under which some parts of the airplane or the whole airplane or its wings will start to vibrate or flutter like a guitar string, a flute reed or a tuning fork and disintegrate or fall apart in flight. Economic engineers achieve the same result in studying the behaviour of the economy and the consumer public by carefully selecting a staple commodity such as beef, coffee, gasoline or sugar and then causing a sudden change or shock in its price or availability, thus kicking everybody's budget and buying habits out of shape. They then observe the shock waves which result by monitoring the changes in advertising, prices and sales of that and other commodities. The objective of such studies is to acquire the know-how to set the public economy into a predictable state of motion or change. Even a controlled self-destructive state of motion which will convince the public that certain expert people should take control of the money system and re-establish security rather than liberty and justice for all. When the subject citizens are rendered unable to control their financial affairs, they, of course, become totally enslaved, a source of cheap labour. Not only the prices of commodities, but also the availability of labour can be used as the means of shock testing. Labour strikes deliver excellent test shocks to an economy, especially in the critical services area of trucking, transportation, communication, public utilities, energy, water, garbage collection, etc. By shock testing, it is found that there is a direct relationship between the availability of money flowing in an economy and the real psychological outlook and response of masses of people dependent upon that availability. For example, there is a measurable quantitative relationship between the price of gasoline and the probability that a person would experience a headache, feel a need to watch a violent movie, smoke a cigarette or go to a tavern for a mug of beer. It is most interesting that by observing and measuring the economic models by which the public tries to run from their problems and escape from reality and by applying the mathematical theory of operations research it is possible to program computers to predict the most probable combination of created events, shocks, which will bring about a complete control and subjugation of the public through a subversion of the public economy by shaking the plum tree. Introduction to the theory of economic shock testing. Let the prices and total sales of commodities be given and symbolised as follows. See diagram 1 page 26. Commodities. Alcoholic beverages, beef, coffee, gasoline, sugar, tobacco, unknown balance. Price function, total sales. 1. Let us assume a simple economic model in which the total number of important staple commodities are represented as beef, gasoline and an aggregate of all other staple commodities, which we will call the hypothetical miscellaneous staple commodity, M. E.g. M is an aggregate of C, S, T, U, etc. Example of shock testing. Assume that the total sales P of petroleum products can be described by the linear function of the quantities B, G and M which are functions of the prices of those respective commodities. See equation, page 27. 
Then where B, G and M are functions of the prices of beef, gasoline and miscellaneous, respectively, and APB, APG and APM are constant coefficients defining the amount by which each of the functions B, G and M affect the sales, P, of petroleum products. We are assuming that B, G and M are variables independent of each other. If the availability of price of gasoline is suddenly changed, then G must be replaced by G and delta G. This causes a change in the petroleum sales from P to P and delta P. Also, we will assume that B and M remain constant when G changes to G and delta G. See equation 2, page 27. Expanding upon this expression, we get See equation 3, page 27. And subtracting the original value of P, we get for the change in P. See equation 4, page 27. This is a rate of change in P due only to an isolated change in G, delta G. In general, AJK is the partial rate of change in the sales effect, J, due to a change in the causal price function of commodity K. If the interval of time were infinitesimal, this expression would be reduced to the definition of the total differential of a function P. 1. See diagram, page 28. When the price of gasoline is shocked, all of the coefficients with round G, 2G, in the denominator are evaluated at the same time. If B, G and M were independent and sufficient for a description of the economy, then three shock tests would be necessary to evaluate the system. There are other factors which may be represented the same way. For example, the tendency of a docile subnation to withdraw under economic pressure may be given by C equation 1, page 29, where G is the price of gasoline, WP is the dollars spent per unit time, referenced to say 1939, for war production during peacetime, etc. These quantities are presented to a computer in matrix format as follows. See diagram 1, page 29. And see equation 2, page 29. Finally, inverting this matrix, that is, solving for the xk terms of the yj, we get, say, C equation 3, page 29. 1. This is the result into which we substitute to get that set of conditions of prices of commodities, bad news on TV, etc., which will deliver a collapse of public morale ripe for takeover. Once the economic price and sales coefficients AJK and BKJ are determined, they may be translated into the technical supply and demand coefficients GJK, CJK and 1LJK. Shock testing of a given commodity is then repeated to get the time rate of change of these technical coefficients. Introduction to Economic Amplifiers Economic amplifiers are the active components of economic engineering. The basic characteristic of any amplifier, mechanical, electrical or economic, is that it receives an input control signal and delivers energy from an independent energy source to a specified output terminal in a predictable relationship to that input control signal. The simplest form of an economic amplifier is a device called advertising. If a person is spoken to by a TV advertiser as if he were a 12 year old then due to suggestibility he will with a certain probability respond or react to that suggestion with the uncritical response of a 12 year old and will reach into his economic reservoir and deliver its energy to buy that product on impulse when he passes it in the store. An economic amplifier may have several inputs and output. Its response might be instantaneous or delayed. Its circuit symbol might be a rotary switch if its options are exclusive, qualitative, go or no-go, 
or it might have its parametric input-output relationship specified by a matrix, with internal energy sources represented. Whatever its form might be, its purpose is to govern the flow of energy from a source to an output sink in direct relationship to an input control signal. For this reason, it is called an active circuit element or component. Economic amplifiers fall into classes called strategies, and in comparison with electronic amplifiers, the specific internal functions of an economic amplifier are called logistical instead of electrical. Therefore, Economic amplifiers not only deliver power gain, but also, in effect, are used to cause changes in the economic circuitry. In the design of an economic amplifier, we must have some idea of at least five functions, which are 1. The available input signals 2. The desired output control objectives 3. The, st the strategic objective 4. The available economic power sources. 5. The logistical options. The process of defining and evaluating these factors and incorporating the economic amplifier into an economic system has been popularly called game theory. The design of an economic amplifier begins with the specification of the power level of the output, which can range from personal to national. The second condition is accuracy of response, that is, how accurately the output action is a function of the input commands. High gain combined with strong feedback helps to deliver the required precision. Most of the error will be in the input data signal. Personal input data tends to be specified, while national input data tends to be statistical. Short list of inputs. Questions to be answered. What, where, why, when, how, who. General sources of information. Telephone taps, analysis of garbage, surveillance, behaviour of children in school. Standard of living by. Food, shelter, clothing, transportation. Social contacts. Telephone, itemised record of calls, family, marriage certificates, birth certificates, etc. Friends, associates, etc. Memberships in organisations, political affiliation. The personal paper trail. Personal buying habits, that is, personal consumer preferences. Checking accounts, credit card purchases, tagged credit card purchases. The credit card purchase of products bearing the UPC product code. Assets. Checking accounts, savings accounts, real estate, business, automobile, etc. Safety deposit at bank, stock market. Liabilities. Creditors, enemies, see legal, loans. Government sources, ploys. Note principle of this ploy, the citizen will almost always make the collection of information easy if he can operate on the free sandwich principle of eat now and pay later. Welfare, social security, USDA, surplus food, doles, grants, subsidies. Government sources via intimidation. Internal Revenue Service, OSHA, Census etc. Other government sources, surveillance of US mail, habit patterns, programming, strengths and weaknesses, activities, sports hobbies, etc. See legal, fear, anger, etc. Crime record, hospital records, drug sensitivities, reaction to pain, etc. Psychiatric records, Fears, angers, disgusts, adaptability, reactions to stimuli, violence, suggestibility or hypnosis, pain, pleasure, love and sex. Methods of coping, of adaptability, behaviour. 
consumption of alcohol, consumption of drugs, entertainment, religious factors influencing behaviour, other methods of escaping from reality. Payment modus operandi, MO, pay on time, etc. Payment of telephone bills, energy purchases, water purchases, repayment of loans, house repayments, automobile payments, payments on credit cards. Political sensitivity, beliefs, contacts, position, strengths, weaknesses, projects, activities. Legal inputs, behavioural control, excuses for investigation, search, arrest or employment of force to modify behaviour. Court records, police records, NCIC, driving record, reports made to police, insurance information, anti-establishment acquaintances. National input information, 1. Business sources via IRS, etc. Prices of commodities, sales, investments in stocks, inventory, production tools and machinery, buildings and improvements, the stock market. Banks and credit bureaus, credit information, payment information. Miscellaneous sources, polls and surveys, publications, telephone records, energy and utility purchases, short list of outputs. Outputs create controlled situations, manipulation of the economy, hence society, control by control of compensation and income. Sequence. 10. Allocates opportunities. 11. Destroys opportunities. 12. Controls the economic environment. 13. Controls the availability of raw materials. 14. Controls capital. 15. Controls bank rates. 16. Controls the inflation of the currency. 17. Controls the possession of property. 18. Controls industrial capacity. 19. Controls manufacturing. 20. Controls the availability of goods, commodities. 21. Controls the prices of commodities. 22. Controls services, the labour force, etc. 23. Controls payments to government officials. 24. Controls the legal functions. 25. Controls the personal data files, uncorrectable by the party slandered. 26. Controls advertising. 27. Controls media contact. 28. Controls material available for TV viewing. 29. Disengages attention from real issues. 30. Engages emotions. 31. Creates disorder, chaos and insanity. 32. Controls design of more probing tax forms. 33. Controls surveillance. 34. Controls the storage of information. 35. Develops psychological analysis and profiles of individuals. 36. Controls legal functions. Repeat of 15. 37. Controls sociological factors. 38. Controls health options. 39. Preys on weakness. 40. Cripples strengths. 41. Leeches wealth and substance. Table of strategies. Do this to get this. Keep the public ignorant. Less public organisation. Maintain access to control. Required reaction to outputs, prices, points for feedback, sales. Create preoccupation. Lower defences. Attack the family unit. Control of the education of the young. Give less cash and more self-indulgence and more data, credit and doles. Attack the privacy of the church. Destroy faith in this sort of government. Social conformity. Computer programming simplicity. Minimise the tax protest. Maximise economic data. Minimum enforcement problems. 
Stabilise the consent. Simplicity coefficients. Tighten control of variables. Simpler computer input data. Greater predictability. Establish boundary conditions, equations. Problem simplicity. Solutions of differential and difference. Proper timing. Less data shift and blurring. Maximise control. Minimum resistance to control. Collapse of currency. Destroy the faith of the American people in each other. Diversion. The primary strategy. Experience has prevent that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of the basic system principles on the one hand, while keeping them confused, disorganised and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other hand. This is achieved by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities, providing low-quality programme of public education in mathematics, logic, systems design and economics, and discour discouraging technical creativity, engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgence and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities by unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape, by way of constant barrage of sex, violence and wars in the media, especially the TV and the newspapers, giving them what they desire in excess, junk food for thought, and depriving them of what they really need. Rewriting history and law and subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. These preclude their interest in and discovery of the silent weapons of social automation technology. The general rule is that there is a profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems and then offer solutions. Diversion Summary Media Keep the adult public attention diverted away from the real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. Schools. Keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law and real history. Entertainment. Keep the public entertainment below a sixth grade level. Work. Keep the public busy, 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 with no time to think, back on the farm with the other animals. Consent. The primary victory. A silent weapon system operates upon data obtained from a docile public by legal, but not always lawful, force. Much information is made available to silent weapon systems programmers through the Internal Revenue Service. See studies in the structure of the American economy for an IRS source list. This information consists of the enforced delivery of well-organised data contained in federal and state tax forms, collected, assembled and submitted by the slave labour provided by taxpayers and employers. Furthermore, the number of such forms submitted to the IRS is a useful indicator of public consent, an important factor in strategic decision-making. Other data sources are given in the shortlist of inputs. Consent coefficients. Numerical feedback indicating victory status. Psychological basis. When the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without just compensation, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement and legal encroachment. A good and easily quantified indicator of harvest time is the number of public citizens who pay income tax despite an obvious lack of reciprocal or honest service from the government. Amplification energy sources. The next step in the process of designing an economic amplifier is discovering the energy sources. The energy sources which support any primitive economic system are, of course, a supply of raw materials and the consent of the people to labour and can consequently assume a certain rank position, level or class in the social structure, that is, to provide labour at various levels in the pecking order. 
Each class, in guaranteeing its own level of income, controls the class immediately below it, hence preserves the class structure. This provides stability and security, but also government from the top. As time goes on and communication and education improve, the lower class elements of the social labour structure become knowledgeable and envious of the good things that the upper class members have. They also begin to attain knowledge of energy systems and the ability to enforce their rise through the class structure. This threatens the sovereignty of the elite. If this rise of the lower classes can be postponed long enough, the elite can achieve energy dominance and labour by consent no longer will hold a position of an essential energy source. Until such energy dominance is absolutely established, the consent of the people to labour and to let others handle their affairs must be taken into consideration, since failure to do so could cause the people to interfere in the final transfer of energy sources to the control of the elite. It is essential to recognise that at this time public consent is still an essential key to the release of energy in the process of economic amplification. Therefore, consent as energy release mechanism will now be considered. Logistics The successful application of a strategy requires a careful study of inputs, outputs, the strategy connecting the inputs and the outputs, and the available energy sources to fuel the strategy. This is called logistics. A logistical problem is studied at the elementary level first, and then levels of greater complexity are studied as a synthesis of elementary factors. This means that a given system is analysed, that is, broken down into its subsystems, and these in turn are analysed until by this process one arrives at the logistical atom, the individual. This is where the process of synthesis properly begins at the time of birth of the individual. The artificial womb. From the time a person leaves its mother's womb, its every effort is directed toward building, maintaining and withdrawing into artificial wombs various sorts of substitute protective devices or shells. The objective of these artificial wombs is to provide a stable environment for both stable and unstable activity to provide a shelter for the evolutionary processes of growth and maturity, that is, survival, to provide security for freedom and to provide defensive protection for offensive activity. This is equally true of both the general public and the elite. However, there is a definite difference in the way each of these classes go about the solution of problems. The political structure of a nation, dependency. The primary reason why the individual citizens of a country create a political structure is a subconscious wish or desire to perpetuate their own dependency relationship of childhood. Simply put, they want a human god to eliminate all risk from their life, pat them on the head, kiss their bruises, put a chicken on every dinner table, clothe their bodies, tuck them into bed at night and tell them that everything will be all right when they wake up in the morning. This public demand is incredible, so the human god, the politician, meets incredibility with incredibility by promising the world and delivering nothing. So who is the bigger liar, the public or the godfather? This public behaviour is surrender born of fear, laziness and expediency. It is the basis of the welfare state as a strategic weapon useful against a disgusting public. Action, offence. Most people want to be able to subdue and or kill other human beings which disturb their daily lives, but they do not want to have to cope with the moral and religious issues which such an overt act on their part might raise. Therefore, they assign the dirty work to others, including their own children, so as to keep the blood off their own hands. They rave about the human treatment of animals and then sit down to a delicious hamburger from a whitewashed slaughterhouse down the street and out of sight. But even more hypocritical, they pay taxes to finance a professional association of hitmen, collectively called politicians, 
and then complain about corruption in government. Responsibility Again, most people want to be free to do the things, to explore, etc., but they are afraid to fail. The fear of failure is manifested in irresponsibility and especially in delegating those personal responsibilities to others where success is uncertain or carries possible or created liabilities, law, which the person is not prepared to accept. They want authority, root word, author, but they will not accept responsibility or liability, so they hire politicians. Summary. The people hire the politicians so that the people can obtain security without managing it, obtain action without thinking about it, inflict theft, injury and death upon others without having to contemplate either life or death, avoid responsibility for their own intentions, obtain the benefits of reality and science without exerting themselves in the discipline of facing or learning either of these things. They give the politicians the power to create and manage a war machine to provide for the survival of the nation womb, prevent encroachment of anything upon the nation womb, destroy the enemy who threatens the nation womb, destroy those citizens of their own country who do not conform for the sake of stability of the nation womb. Politicians hold many Kazi military jobs, the lowest being the police, which are soldiers, the attorneys and the CPAs next, who are spies and saboteurs, licensed, and the judges who shout orders and run the closed union military shop for whatever the market will bear. The generals are industrialists. The presidential level of commander-in-chief is shared by the international bankers. The people know that they have created this farce and financed it with their own taxes, consent, but they would rather knuckle under than be the hypocrite. Thus a nation becomes divided into two very distinct parts, a docile sub-nation, great silent majority, and a political sub-nation. The political sub-nation remains attached to the docile sub-nation, tolerates it and leeches its substance until it grows strong enough to detach itself and then devour its parent. System Analysis In order to make meaningful computerized economic decisions about war, the primary economic flywheel, it is necessary to assign concrete logistical values to each element of the war structure, personnel and material alike. This process begins with a clear and candid description of the subsystems of such a structure. The draft as military service. Few efforts of human behaviour modification are more remarkable or more effective than that of the socio-military institution known as the draft. A primary purpose of a draft or other such institution is to instill, by intimidation, in young males of a society the uncritical conviction that the government is omnipotent. He is soon taught that a prayer is slow to reverse what a bullet can do in an instant. Thus, a man trained in a religious environment for 18 years of his life can, by this instrument of the government, be broken down, be purged of his fantasies and delusions in a matter of mere months. Once that conviction is instilled, all else becomes easy to instill. Even more interesting is the process by which a young man's parents, who purportedly love him, can be induced to send him off to war to his death. Although the scope of this work will not allow this matter to be expanded in full detail, nevertheless, a coarse overview will be possible and can serve to reveal those factors which must be included in some numerical form in a computer analysis of social and war systems. We begin with a tentative definition of the draft. 2. The draft, selective service, etc is an institution of compulsory collective sacrifice and slavery devised by the middle-aged and elderly for the purpose of pressing the young into doing the public dirty work. It further serves to make the youth as guilty as the elders, thus making criticism of the elders by the youth less likely. Generational stabiliser. It is marketed and sold to the public under the label of patriotic equals national service.
Once a candid economic definition of the draft is achieved, that definition is used to outline the boundaries of a structure called a human value system, which in turn is translated into the terms of game theory. The value of such a slave labourer is given in a table of human values, a table broken down into categories by intellect, experience, post-service job demand, etc. Some of these categories are ordinary and can be tentatively evaluated in terms of the value of certain jobs for which a known fee exists. Some jobs are harder to value because they are unique to the demands of social subversion. For an extreme example, the value of a mother's instruction to her daughter, causing that daughter to put certain behavioural demands upon a future husband 10 or 15 years. Hence, Thus, by suppressing his resistance to a perversion of a government, making it easier for a banking cartel to buy the state of New York in, say, 20 years. Such a problem leans heavily upon the observations and data of wartime espionage and many types of psychological testing. But crude mathematical models, algorithms, etc., can be devised, if not to predict, at least to predeterminate these events with maximum certainty. What does not exist by natural cooperation is thus enhanced by calculated compulsion. Human beings are machines, levers, which may be grasped and turned, and there is little real difference between automating a society and automating a shoe factory. These derived values are variable it is necessary to use a current table of human values for computer analysis. These values are given in true measure rather than US dollars, since the latter is unstable, being presently inflated beyond the production of national goods and services so as to give the economy a false kinetic energy. Paper inductance. The silver value is stable it being possible to buy the same amount with a gram of silver today as it could be bought in 1920. Human value measured in silver units changes slightly due to changes in production technology. Enforcement 1. Factor 1 As in every social system approach, stability is achieved only by understanding and accounting for human nature action-reaction patterns. A failure to do so can be and usually is disastrous. As in other human social schemes, one form or another of intimidation or incentive is essential to the success of the draft. Physical principles of action and reaction must be applied to both internal and external subsystems. To secure the draft, Individual brainwashing, programming and both the family unit and the peer group must be engaged and brought under control. Factor 2. Father. The man of the household must be housebroken to ensure that Junior will grow up with the right social training and attitudes. The advertising media etc. are engaged to see to it that father-to-be is pussy whipped before or by the time he is married. He is taught that he either conforms to the social notch cut out for him or his sex life will be hobbled and his tender companionship will be zero. He is made to see that women demand security more than logical, principled or honourable behaviour. By the time his son goes to war, father, with jelly for a backbone, will slam a gun into Junior's hand before father will risk the censure of his peers or make a hypocrite of himself by crossing the investment he has in his own personal opinion or self-esteem. Junior will go to war, or father will be embarrassed. So Junior will go to war, the true purpose notwithstanding. Factor 3. Mother. The female element of human society is ruled by emotion first and logic second. In the battle between logic and imagination, imagination always wins. Fantasy prevails, maternal instinct dominates, so that the child comes first and the future comes second. A woman with a newborn baby is too starry-eyed to see a wealthy man's cannon fodder or a cheap source of slave labour. 
A woman must, however, be conditioned to accept the transition to reality when it comes, or sooner. As the transition becomes more difficult to manage, the family unit must be carefully disintegrated and state-controlled public education and state-operated childcare centres must become more common and legally enforced so as to begin the detachment of the child from the mother and the father at an early age. Inoculation of behavioural drugs, Ritalin, can speed the transition for the child. Mandatory. Caution. A woman's impulsive anger can override her fear. An irate woman's power must never be underestimated, and her power over a pussy-whipped husband must likewise never be underestimated. It got women the vote in 1920. Factor 4. Junior. The emotional pressure for self-preservation during the time of war and the self-serving attitude of the common herd that have an option to avoid the battlefield if Junior can be persuaded to go is all of the pressure finally necessary to propel Johnny off to war. Their quiet blackmailings of him are the threats. No sacrifice, no friends, no glory, no girlfriends. Factor 5. Sister. And what about Junior's sister? She is given all the good things of life by her father and taught to expect the same from her future husband, regardless of the price. Factor 6. Cattle. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brains. And so this mindless school of jellyfish, father, mother, son and daughter become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same. This concludes what is available of this document.